The CSS Savannah was a Richmond-class ironclad ram built during the United States Civil War. In 1861, she was ordered to be constructed according to the requirements for home-built ironclads, but she wasn't commissioned until July of 1863, so her career was brief. Museum interpreter Jim Dunnigan is joining me today to discuss this vessel. Hi, Jim. Hi, Wendy. So, tell us about your uniform. My uniform is the working kit for a crew member of CSS Savannah in June, July of 1863. The crew could make some of the uniform pieces themselves, whether it be procuring uh, fabric to make those items or getting them from arsenals or family members who could get patterns and make them for the crew. I see. So, Jim, how and where was the CSS Savannah constructed? CSS Savannah was designed by Mr. John L. Porter, the Confederate States Naval Engineer and Constructor. The contract was given to Mr. Henry Willink Jr. of Savannah. He laid her down in April of 1862, and she was launched February 4, 1863, and continued to outfit till July of 1863. CSS Savannah is also not a small vessel. She's 172 feet, six inches in length overall, 34 foot beam, and a 12 foot draft. She has four inches of plate iron armor to, on top of her casemate with a 22 inch live oak and pine backing behind it. Her knuckle, which extends well below the waterline, the short fore and aft and shield decks are also plated in two inches of plate iron. Well, I understand given her construction, she had problems with maneuverability. She did. Customary with early Confederate ironclad propulsion systems, she tended to be underpowered. So the best she could really achieve was about six knots, and it took her about half an hour to do a 180 degree turn. So given those issues, how was she utilized? CSS Savannah is utilized as a reactionary vessel. After the loss of the CSS Atlanta in June of 1863, CSS Savannah would be bottled up behind those river defenses to prevent her loss. She'd be moored up at the city's waterfront with the crew billeted off the ship due to the insufferable living conditions. And what were the living conditions like? Inside of a ship like CSS Savannah, it is only applicable to billet these men aboard the vessel in the fall and winter months. During the summer, that's just not possible. You're looking at a rotation or a skeleton crew to keep things operating aboard, aboard the ship. In those summer months, in subtropical Savannah, it can get north of 125 degrees, and these men are wearing the wool and flannel uniforms. We also mustn't forget these men are also enduring mosquito-borne illnesses like yellow fever and malaria, and that's quite commonly seen and run through the squadron. So what were her activities for the remainder of the Civil War? Very lackluster. She really didn't see any combat going forward. Even with the arrival of Sherman's forces at the doorstep of the city of Savannah in December of 1864, her job was to support Army ground operations around the city. And on the 12th, was requested to go to Scrabbins Ferry, which she arrived the following day. She would remain in that position until the early morning hour of the 21st of December. Shortly after the forces here had evacuated, they set fire to her and been captured by federal forces. The crew themselves would actually head off into South Carolina and rejoin those forces for the remainder of, for the duration of the war. After the Savannah is set ablaze, there were rumors that she exploded, and a resident of South Carolina claimed that the explosion was so massive it blew out several of the windows in the homes there. Join us next time as we take a look at the first flagship for the Ocean Steamship Company of Savannah, appropriately named the city of Savannah.